I just spent seven days, seven days crossing the Atlantic on my very first, my very first transatlantic cruise on Holland America Lines MS Rotterdam. And well, it's uh, it's been an adventure. It's been interesting. Let's talk about it. <music> Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here to tell you about my very first crossing of the Atlantic Ocean on a cruise ship. I really didn't know what to expect before I embarked, but I did get a lot of comments from people telling me some of the things that would be a challenge. I was told that the seas would be challenging. I, I was told that it would be boring. I was I was told that uh, I would be ready for these sea days to end once the sea days ended. And well, the, the sea days are about to end. This is my eighth sea day on the MS Rotterdam. We're, we're, we're across the Atlantic at this point. We're almost to the UK. Our first port stop is tomorrow in Plymouth in the UK. And so I thought I would give you some of my observations first. Let's talk about the motion of the ocean. Based on the comments, I did anticipate this question. What were the ocean waters like on the daily? And so I figured the best way to describe that was to show it to you visually. So every morning I got up and I took video of what the seas were like. And so uh, we'll quickly look through what the seas look like every day for the last seven days. Good morning, everybody. It is the 8th of April, Saturday. And uh, a lot of people have asked, what's the seas gonna be like on this transatlantic? Will it be choppy? Well, here's a sea check. Sea check for the first day of the cruise, Saturday the 8th of April. It's a little chilly, but it's, uh, waters are calm. All right, here's a look at the ocean for the 9th of April. It's our second day at sea. Uh, we are somewhere in the Atlantic. Supposed to be traveling around 16 knots. Uh, water's pretty smooth. There you go, day two. All right, here we are the 10th of April. This is our third day at sea since leaving New York. And uh, yeah, the water remains fairly calm. Not much different than yesterday. We have a little movement, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. So not super cold either, which is surprising. So. There you go. There's a look at the sea on the 10th of April, 2023. All right, here's the sea check for April the 11th. I believe this is our fourth day at sea. And we are uh, about halfway through our crossing. Uh, today's this, the sea's a little more rolly. Not huge waves out there, but you can definitely feel the roll of the sea. But yeah, here's what it looks like. April the 11th, 2023. All right, here we are on the 12th of April, our fifth sea day. Oddly, it's getting warmer, uh, but of course the seas are getting a little more rough. It's pretty, like last night it rolled a lot, a lot of creaking in the cabin, but uh, overall not too bad. But yeah, day five, April the 12th. All right, here we go. Here is the what's the sea like check. It is April the 13th, 2023. We are still making our way across the Atlantic from New York to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. We do have stops in the UK. Uh, but yeah, fairly calm today. The thing to remember is that the ship is equipped with stabilizers, so it adjusts to the sea. So even though the sea is rolling, the ship has some movement, but it's not extreme but this is what the sea looks like on the 13th of April, 2023. All right, here's what the sea looks like on April the 14th, 2023. I think we're day seven of the transatlantic here. It's been seven sea days, uh, but yeah, it's uh, looks a little calmer than yesterday. The ship is moving from side to side fairly decently. So we got a little bit of a roll, but um, I believe that the captain said there would be four meter swells today, but uh, that certainly doesn't look like 12 feet. Yeah, maybe it does, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we are almost uh, almost to where we're going, almost to Plymouth, so one more day. There you go. So as you can see, there were never really any of these 
fantastical stories of rough seas. I've seen a lot of these headlines about transatlantic crossings where the seas were rough that day, my friend, and people with you know very dramatic thumbnails. That you know the 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 waves were you know 20 feet high. We haven't had any of that at all. And of course, there's technology on this cruise ship that keeps the ship stable, even in higher seas. Uh, there are stabilizers, and so for the most part. Uh, the rocking of the ship has been minimal. And I say minimal because it's not been completely zero. Even right now as I'm sitting here, there's a little rolling back and forth of the ship. There have been a few people that I've talked to on the cruise ship that said they've had some motion sickness, but I've been in much worse situations when it comes to the movement of the cruise ship. So yeah, the, the crossing part, the seven days on the sea, it really wasn't that bad. Another thing that people hit me with before I embarked on this cruise is that it's a lot of sea days and you will be bored during the sea days. The cruise line's smart. They know that during these sea days, everybody's on board, right? We've got about 2,600 passengers. Everyone is on board. They're going to need something to do. So they plan for things to do. We have two guest lecturers on board currently. One of them is the famous cruise historian Bill Miller, and that guy's been working his butt off. He's been doing two lectures a day for every sea day. Uh, there's also another lecturer on board that's been talking about food culture. The cruise director, interestingly on Holland America Line, the cruise director has a second title. It's the cruise and travel director, and part of their responsibility is to also give talks. And so the cruise director has been having these daily coffee talks where you can get to meet the crew members and the officers. But then she's also been doing travel lectures. She talked about bicycling, a whole variety of things, the history of Holland America Line. And so from a, an enrichment or a lecture perspective, there's been a lot of opportunities for that during the day. On these sea days, uh, you can also get crafty. There's been several painting classes on the sea day. There's adult coloring. There's been origami. And then there's also very specific things like there's bridge lessons. You can learn to play bridge. You can play bridge. Uh, pickleball is a big thing on the cruise ship. Cruise ship has an extensive games and puzzle area. There's bingo and trivia and classes at the gym. This is on top of all of the normal cruise stuff. The main swimming pool is enclosed. There's three hot tubs there. There's bars everywhere. There's food everywhere. And of course, there's been a lot of entertainment on the cruise ship on the daily. Uh, the music walk is happening every night with live music. There are shows in the theater every night. And so in reality, there is stuff to do most of the waking hours on this cruise ship. So, you know, if you find yourself bored, you know, I, I don't think that's on the cruise line. I just want to say that. So it comes to the question... To me particularly, have I been bored on this cruise ship with all of that stuff to do? And I can answer emphatically, no, I have not been bored. And let me tell you the most surprising thing about these seven days at sea is how quickly they have gone by. We've had some time changes, which has been interesting, the way they do time changes on this cruise ship. Uh, we've had four time changes, so now we are four hours ahead of time from where we started in New York City, but they haven't been doing the time changes in the middle of the night. They've been doing the time changes every other day at noon. And so once it got to be noon, lunchtime, we would move the clocks forward to 1 p.m. And we've done that four times. And they said the primary reason to do that was to not disrupt passenger sleep, which is appreciated, and also not to disrupt the crew sleep. And so the thing that's been wild is on those days where the hour jumped forward, it, it kind of you know shortened the afternoon. So you had to be conscious of your dinner plans because you don't want to just eat lunch and then all of a sudden it's time for dinner. So these seven days have gone by really quickly and now here I am on the eighth sea day and I'm a little bit in a panic. You know, I'm a ship person. I'm not usually excited about going to port, but this is one of those cruises where I'm very excited to go to port and so I want to be ready. So I've got to make sure that I got all my batteries charged and all my memory cards cleaned off and all my gear ready to go and I've got to have a plan because I've booked some you know, all day excursions in most of these port cities. And it's just the beginning. I'm on a 10 day cruise after this that I think only has two sea days. And so for the next 12 days, 13 days, it's just going to be go, 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 go. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss, I think I'm going to miss these seven sea days that I've already enjoyed. Look, I know the experience is probably not the same for everyone. I'm sure people have been on transatlantics that haven't had fairly calm seas and that maybe changed the dynamic. But for me, I would I would take this week at sea 
all all week long, all day long. It's been great. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I would recommend it. Uh, but you know, that's just my experience. Let me ask you: Have you done a transatlantic before? Uh, how do you feel when you have five, six, seven, eight sea days in a row? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, help inform the community down in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.